Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be a jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. Before I go in and get into everything, if you guys can do me a massive favor, smash that like button and leave me a comment. And if you're not already subscribed, please do so. It really helps me out in terms of promoting this content to the masses. And I do honestly believe that this content is worth the masses paying attention to. You know, we've been very right on the markets. We haven't got everything right, but we've been very right on the markets generally uh, thus far. And you guys know that we took a punt back into the markets at the start of January. It's paid off thus far. And we've actually looked to take advantage of these pullbacks, looking for structure that sets up continuation. Now, last week was a very bearish, bearish week. Everyone went full blown bear. Come Monday, there's a lot of positivity now being reintroduced to the space. And certainly the price action has done quite well. This is all as a result of markets now having from the start of February price rates going a lot higher, starting to um, price in uh, cuts to those implied rates. And that's what we're going to be getting into in this video. So tomorrow we've got the CPI, which is going to be significant. We had sticky CPI data and inflationary data in February, which essentially caused uh, implied rates. We can use a two-year yield as an example to climb. This is the start of February. You've seen rates climb i.e. this looking at the two-year yield here, and you've seen essentially risk start of February sell-off. There's now looking like there's going to be a bit of a reversion in that. Now, in the light of in the wake of sort of Silicon Valley Bank, the Fed have held an emergency meeting, and it's very interesting because now you have markets that were looking at, and we've always said 25, and we don't think that they can do much more because the Fed's run out of runway. And this is exactly what we've meant, guys. You've now got markets that were looking at 50 basis points on the 22nd, which is the next Fed fund meeting. They're now pricing in 25 or zero instead of 25 basis points or 50. So this is now 25 basis points and this is zero. And actually, there was some interesting news from Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs no longer expects the Fed to hike rates in March. Site stress on banking system. In light of stress in banking system, we no longer expect the FOMC to deliver a rate hike uh, at its next meeting on March 22nd. Goldman Sachs economist Jan Hatzut said, in Sunday's notes, the firm expects the latest measures to be provide substantial liquidity to banks facing deposit outflows. And this is the thing, it's not just H um, HSBC, it's not just Silicon Valley Bank, there's been loads of banks caught up in it. First Republic is warm. I'm sure there's going to be more to come out the closet. And, and, and the Fed have essentially came out and said, look, we will backstop this. We won't let this get out of hand. This is almost like a soft pivot. And this is what we've been saying, guys, I can't tell you how much shit got thrown my way yesterday for the price selling off uh not yesterday sorry last week for the price selling off even though if you followed this channel you knew full well what we were looking for and that a pullback was expected and we even gave you the levels to play to in terms of buying if you wanted to take advantage or not and where we get invalidated at the mood changed massively from that and certainly if the fed we get low inflation tomorrow the fed don't come out and, and, and do a rate hike what do you think happens to markets that have sold off from February 1st because they've been implied hawkishness and now we've got this dovish tone coming in? Subscribe to this channel, guys. If you want to do one extra and you want to find out exactly what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, you want to stay in touch with me daily through uh, Discord and also have weekly meetings with me where we look at specific things like we did a, a Sunday session like we do every Sunday, feel free to join that Patreon. Uh, in the description, guys. It's well worth it for the price you get. I know what else is on the market out there. And simply people can't compete with the sort of value that we're offering here. So this is very much the plan. And isn't it interesting how things have changed? And certainly with no rate potentially on the horizon, no rate hike potentially on the horizon, this is going to be deemed as a kind of soft pivot. We're going to see what comes out of the emergency meeting today. I think it's 11 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. Washington time. So that will be, what is that? Maybe 3, 4 PM UK time. Also, very quickly, guys, Circle USDC operations will be open for business on Monday morning, including the new automated settlement via our new partnership with Cross River Bank. So 3.3 billion of USDC reserve risk removed. This is very interesting because the Circle situation is now, um, or the USDC situation is now, you know, pivoted. And we did tell people not to panic on this news. Uh, and it looks like Silicon Valley Bank are going to get bailed out, which is certainly um, 
interesting and, and and the fed have sort of said they'll cover anybody else that needs covering if it does start to spiral so the things to watch of course the dollar's getting a little bit weak off the back end of this um and the two-year yields is something that i'm watching like an absolute hawk because this is free falling at this point it's basically retraced all of and and this is why i think we're actually in for a pretty good time right here guys so you can see markets sold off with this going up. Let's not use Bitcoin. Let's use the S&P. And then I'm going to show you something else on here, which makes me think the rates are coming to an end. And I'll show you why you look at this to determine rates. S&P, right? Everything sold off in wake of this going up, which is implied rates. Now it's shooting down. I'm going to take a punt that the markets do that. Okay. And I actually think rate hikes are coming to an end. And I think this, this market's been giving us warning signs. You guys know that I'm a big fan of the RSI. And looking at bullish or bearish divergences, RSI is just a momentum-based indicator um, or oscillator, you could say. And essentially, you know, it, when you have, in this case, a bearish divergent, it means that you're you've put in a high already on the RSI and a lower high on it, which means that there's less sort of conviction and momentum in these highs, which could show that a trend is subject to change. So it's very interesting that Bitcoin perfectly filled the CME gap before seeing upside. For those of you that like to trade CMEs and, and think there's something in it. But if you look at this situation here, which was going into the repo crisis, which subsequently inverted the yield curve, we've got a similar thing taking place here. And actually, lower yields are better for the banking system itself. If they continue to climb in terms of yields, you're going to get more and more pressure, more and more risk of systemic failure. I think if we get lower inflation, we get that no rate hike, markets are going to do extremely well. We've got structure that we're looking at for Bitcoin. You know, ultimately, we want to see this neckline get taken and for this pattern to play out because this gives you targets of well above 30k. Now I think 30k is gonna get taken in no time once you've done this. But if Bitcoin can keep climbing, break this neckline, come back and retest it, you're looking for that upside. Um, and it's been pretty damn hard keeping a bullish outlook throughout this because honestly, I've been getting bearish sort of onslaughts from all over the place uh lots of snide little comments but the thing the, the the interesting thing is you know and i've also seen lots of sort of pictures on twitter with people posting leverage trades that are like 20 30x leverage that they've done well shorting guys it's complete nonsense that um you know they'll never show a pnl or a or a history of trading because if you're trading 30 uh, 30 20x leverage you're gonna get wrecked often um, and you might get one thing right um, every now and then. But please don't believe the hype out there. You know, stick to a plan. It's why it's so important to be in a group like the one I've got. Or, you know, you can choose whoever it is you you, you want to follow. Um, because we really keep you on the right side of things. And, and also help people deal with some of the emotions that are felt through markets. You know, and there's, there's, there's no point being emotional with markets because you don't control them. The only thing you control is you and how you act as a result of them. So the plan is still in play, ladies and gentlemen. It's had a little bit of a, a, a backing, a support with what's going on with the readjusting of rates. And we'll see what takes place. We, remember, keep an eye on the, on the yields. Keep an eye on everything else. There is also this something that does need to be mentioned. A pivot is typically negative for markets. So when the Fed typically pivot, markets don't do too well. And we have done this whole case study. Um, and that's something definitely to keep an eye on, even though I'm bullish, you know, we're always, always, there's never a time that we're not looking at the alternative and, and the alternative path and, and, and what we need to see that become more of a playable path than the one that we're currently on. Uh, right now, we still have that bullish outlook. But just to show you the, the, the uh, two-year yields, go pull your Fed funds up. These follow each other, guys. <clears throat> so this is what, what we're using to look at rates. So why we took a pump back in the market here, we said, like, we think maybe right to the top or they're close to it. Um, and to me, you know, rates look to be topping, which means ultimately markets are going to front run that in the same way that they front run um, selling off them. You know, if we overlay up the S&P, for example, here, you know, but a pivot a coming down a rates actually typically isn't that good for markets. Um, so we'll see what, what happens. So there's lots to sort of think about, guys. This is the main story. Ultimately, you know, we've had 
uh, markets now repricing the repricing of rate hikes um and and the dust is somewhat settling and i think actually crypto could do very well certainly given what we've shown you with the yields and, and how this all kind of correlates and lines up so that's all i've got for you in this video guys again if you enjoyed the content like so appreciate it so as a comment and i'll catch you all in the next one thanks a lot for watching ladies and gents see you in the next